Smoke, reality check. My table is flooded. I barely got my computer and my hard drive was wet <laughs> with four terabytes of footage. Yeah. Okay, so we know what the problem is. The plaster is higher than the glass. So obviously the water sits on top of the glass and even if it's all waterproofed with silicone underneath and waterproofing on top, it's still, because the water is sitting on top, it will get in. So we need to chip, chip away the plaster without smashing the window um, and then, you know, so the water can get out. And I have a slight, slight, slight leak here. Just seven. It doesn't even reach the floor, thanks God. It's just a big rain that came. Big, big rain. But ever so slightly. So we must just check that side. And I think even a little bit. No, it's just there. It's just there. Uh, my window cracked whilst you want to hear all the mistakes because the windowsill was too high when we plastered it. And... Um, And this guy, when you position it, make sure that you put the level slightly that slightly out, slightly so it's not because we made it level level. Well, that's level. So if it's slightly out, any water can't get in; it will always come out. So because it's slightly, it's because it's parallel, it just leaks in. And as I said, so here we need to raise this paving up because it's just the water collects here. So that's not nice. Thanks God, <laughs> I haven't rented my dome out because it would have been a disaster. Yeah, so we just put a temporary plastic on top to save my table, uh, but it was a big rain, big. And another thing, these trenches that you do, they take water away, but not fast enough, not fast enough, uh, so rocks. The water backs up on the gravel and we experienced it in our wetland. It's good for the wetland, but that's where I made that mistake was cutting the liner too short because I didn't accommodate for the water backing up. So big rocks will allow the water to get out. Uh, that's an overflow from the gutter if the gutter is dirty. If not the gutter, if the box is dirty, there's a mesh screen there. And our gutter pipe just... Uh, I think it broke again. Just the amount of water and weight to secure things. Yeah. Problem. But these are the tweaks we have to do. These are the tweaks we have to do. Okay, so um, so we have a leak. So I see this, this, this step. Made this trench for the water to come out. But I still see this point is a bit high, Ronnie. I think this point we need to come down to the water and I think we might need to do another trench here and another trench there but lower than the glass you know like in line with the glass but not high like here is stepping up can you see yes so before we do that I will still do that I just wanted to do a little test of to secure this ridge with some silicone if that can work Yeah, it actually works. So we're gonna try this. We're gonna try this, but uh, the problem is that when you're plastering, make sure that this final plaster does not create a step like this over the glass, because the water is just sitting. And even if it's waterproof, as you can see, we use silicone. We've got our waterproofing cloth that we've done, you know. But still, it's just not. Uh, it's just not to. Um, yeah, because if the water is sitting on the glass and can't come out, big rain, you know, it's just getting in. So you want the water to get out, and that's why the step is a problem. Okay. So we'll basically, yeah, we'll, we'll apply all around, and then we'll just do a gentle smooth, but not too tight. You still want it to get in everywhere and create a nice little... Okay, so we made two more trenches. There's one, there's another one. I asked Ronnie to go quite low, which he has. Um, yeah, so now we're just going to trim up the cloth and we're going to apply new cloth. Clean this out and then we're going to apply new cloth. The water must come out, out, out. 
silicones, the edges. Rania, I'm just not too happy with this job here. You, you know, need to add a bit, okay? Okay. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah. Figuring it out. Welcome to Bayveda Academy. My name is Alosha Linov and I was born in Uzbekistan and raised in Russia and South Africa. I'm a visionary inventor, international edutainer and a master builder of biogeometrical or inspiring, functionally self-sustaining and regenerative ecotech as well as living habitats. For 16 years I've transformed square venues into nurturing womb-like spaces with my liquid spandex. My love for curvilinear natural biotecture, our rivers and indigenous forests as well as our mother earth has taken me on a journey around the world learning practical permaculture wisdom as well as electromagnetic radiation and geopathic stress protection from masters like Jeff Lawton, Mike Reynolds, John Todd, John Jevons, Ibrahim Karim, Nadir Khalili, Hajar Gibran, as well as many others. After attending these live workshops, I practically experimented and built all the learned wisdom at this very property. I have also run multiple workshops all over the world, teaching folk about water self-sufficiency as well as eco-home construction. Making countless and very expensive mistakes over the last 12 years made me perfect nature-inspired water ecosystems as well as our eco-home construction methods. My approach for learning, teaching, building and designing allowed me to record, organize and upload our living eco-home masterclass which will practically assist any novice to build an off-grid eco-shelter without bank's generous hand or create full water self-sufficiency around their current home. In our self-study online comprehensive training, you will practically learn step by step from start to finish how to build a bio-shelter living organism which mimics nature's genius by expressing permaculture ecosystemic design. These autonomous shelters, which can be built anywhere on Earth, create their own oxygen, treat external air with fungi, grow food from wastewater, and neutralize the harmful effects of electromagnetic radiation, humanizing man-made technology with the design language of biogeometry and addition of shungit argon energy accumulators to the natural building materials. Our DIY solar passive design homes interact with sun, shade, wind and harvest rain then store it in a variety of discrete, robust and super affordable water reservoirs then purify it with biochar slow sand filter and recycle all of their waste water seven times for garden irrigation, flushing of loose as well as biogas oh. production. Our bioshelter organisms are designed to be nested in economically thriving cooperative communities all based on natural law.